Hey, everybody, welcome to episode one of the Cash Flow Joe podcast presented by Pips Path. I'm Pips Telic, joined by my business partners, Steve Hipple, Bradley Strack, and Sam Musa. Steve, how are you doing today? Hey, Pip, what's up? Awesome to have you here. Bradley, how are you doing today? Just super, my friend. Just super. <laughs> and Sam Musa, he's already giggling. How you doing, my friend, Just Sam? Happy to be here. Happy to be here. That's awesome. <laughs> And so we are here to help beginning or beginning investors with their first transaction. But we're also here to help seasoned investors learn how to make more money, do more deals, do it with more leverage, and be able to do it in a safer way. Our company trains and mentors thousands of students all over the world to become successful investors. We decided even before we started this that we were going to have a good time whether you do or not. So for more information, visit our website at pipspath.com where we have tons of free resources for you to get your to get started and to get your personal scorecard and tons of videos for you guys to be learning from. For more information, visit our website, Real Estate Investing, guys. What we hope to what, what we what we hope you will see is not just about personal success, it's about generational success or building a legacy that will last longer than you. For today's episode, we're going to be talking about why we love investing in real estate versus other other investments and what you need to do to get started. So, why do we like real estate? What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull in my partner. So, Bradley, what's one of the reasons you love investing in property? Uh I guess the number one reason I like real estate over any other asset class is it's just something that that we're always going to have a need for. Um, at the end of the day, every single one of us needs a place to rest our head, and and it's just it, it's not going to change with technology. We've still got to have a place to sleep, right? They call it one of the big three: food, water, and shelter. Uh, so so really, the the understanding that. This is a game that we can play, not just during our timelines, but our kids can do that, our grandkids can do that, and so this is this is an investment that that you can really have forever. So, Steve, what, what why do you like real estate so much? Lots of reasons. Real estate is great. I think uh, you know, as Bradley said, we we all need real estate. We we we're in real estate right now. Everywhere you go, we're always in real estate, no matter where. But uh, with what I like about it, you can control it, and when I mean, when you can c- control it. You can choose where you want to invest, what neighborhoods you want to invest in, what strategies do you want to invest in? Do you want to make you know more cash flow? Do you want to force appreciation? What do I mean by force appreciation? You know, to force appreciation, well, I guess first of all, there's two types of appreciation: forced appreciation and natural appreciation. Forced appreciation is when I buy a property. We do a rehab on it. We do a renovation on that property. So maybe we buy the property, we landscape the front yard, we do some flooring, do some paint, you know, upgrade the bathroom, kitchen, whatever, you know. So that's that's forced appreciation. We bought the property here. We made the property look better, smell better, more desirable. It's forcing the value up. So that's one way. I've done lots of rehabs in my day, lots of forced appreciation. There's also natural appreciation. Natural appreciation is buying your property and watching it go up in value. Well, does it always go up in value? No, it can go up in value. It can go down in value. The market goes sideways. The market's done all those things in the past number of years. Recently, the market's gone up for many, many years. Depending where you are, it's starting to kind of curl off, you know, level off, roll over a little bit. Some markets are still going up. just depends. So but I, I like property because we all need property. We all need a place to live. It's nice to have pride of ownership, but the opportunities in buying, investing in property are just phenomenal. And there's so many things you can do with it while you own it. And Sam, I, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw it over to Sam because he's probably going to tell you something a little bit different than these guys. <laughs> Sam, why do you like property so much? Well, I, I, I don't like property. <laughs> so I like property investing. Uh, I like the investing part, physical property not appealing to me. I love the opportunity to uh, build a team, let them do the heavy lifting, get my time back, uh, and, and let the real estate physical property uh, be handled by someone else. I'm not interested in the physical property. Very excited about the opportunities that real estate offer that no other asset class, class does because of the physical property. I just, I'm not interested in the real estate part of it. But the investing part, nothing more exciting, I think. 
Yeah, and I, I kind of fall on that same plane, I think, a little bit. I'm not excited about property. I my wife would would watch those fix and flip shows all day long, and I and I can't 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 stomach them. I, I I just find those hard to watch. So why do I like property? See, I'm a guy that if somebody else is making money doing something, I'm going, well, why can't I do that? So I see property investors, and I think, man, they're making money. They're controlling assets. They get all these tax benefits. And it's a great way, and Sam will talk obviously more about this as we go through different episodes, is creatively financing. And the one thing that I do like about property is that everybody needs it. I think Bradley touched a little bit on that. But if I can help somebody else get into a house that couldn't get into it without me, and I make money along the way, that's a huge win for me because I'm not only making money, but I'm helping people. And that's what I think I really like about property. And so it's about the fact that everybody needs it. So the, com- you know, the, the question that comes to mind a lot of times is, is what do we need to get started? And for, as we just said, we all have different things that we like about property. But what I'd really like to do is, is, is make sure you guys understand you don't need money to do property. Everybody thinks you got to have a boatload of money to do property. In fact, the more you know, as Sam says, the less money you need. The less you know, the more money you're going to need. And so what I want to do is I'm going to go to my partners here and let them talk a little bit. And, back, you know, Bradley, what I'd like you to do is start, you know, how did you get started in property? And how did this whole journey of being a property investor, because you're the young guy in this group. I mean, heck, you're, I could be your dad. Let's go with that. I'm old enough to be your dad. Now, Sam and- You look like it too. Yeah. Sam and Steve would have been very young dads, but I would have already been 20 when you were born. And I, I think like that's, 12, that's I think yeah, I yeah, 12. I think you're a little more than 12, but that's okay. <laughs> so Bradley, tell us a little bit about your background, how you kind of got started in this whole world of property. So very uh, interesting, I guess, because my background was, was nowhere near anything related to real estate. So I, I grew up in a small town in uh, Pennsylvania, outside of Pittsburgh and kind of blue collar family. My mom was a stay at home mom. My dad had a a nine to five at a local bank and they basically said, Bradley, you know, you got to work really hard uh, in school. So you get good grades. You can get into a good college because if you get into a good college, you can get a really good career. Uh, Then you'll make a lot more money than we've ever made. And that way you'll be fine. You can build your white picket fence and live happily ever after. You just need to make more money. Did, did you really want a white picket fence or is that just something you read in a book somewhere? I didn't want the white picket fence. I wanted a beach. That was that was. So your mom thought she wanted exactly. a white picket fence. Right. I got it. Because that's a, you don't look like a white picket fence guy to me. No, you look like a guy who would stand behind the fence though and kind of creep over the top. I'm, I'm kind of a creeper. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so... So my family has me convinced to, to work hard, get a good good degree, and get a good job, and, and that's exactly what I did. So uh, directly out of high school, I went to pharmacy school at Duquesne University in Pittsburgh, and at 23 years old, I had my doctorate in pharmacy, was moving down to Florida for that beach I wanted, not the white picket fence, uh, but had a six-figure salary and a new car, living on the water with my friends, and, and kind of thought I had life figured out. Uh, was finally uh, making some what I consider to be real money. It was more than my family had ever made, and I was a 23-year-old kid. I mean, how hard could this really be? So uh, I start working at the Walgreens, and and, uh, I'm a pharmacist there. Can we get Walgreens to be a sponsor, do you think? Because we talk about Walgreens a lot. They can just bring us snacks, like Smarties and stuff. Like, that'd be good, too. Not the after, snacks are on after. aisle 18 if yeah. you need them. Okay, the not ones on the after. bottom shelf are the fresher ones. Yeah, after he finishes the story, I don't think we can ever use Walgreens ever as a sponsor. I think, well, I think we'll, we'll be able to use Walgreens. They're going to want to be on we the like wall Walgreens. behind us. We like all They're places be ones where be on you, the wall. Can, you can get just, drugs. Just like real estate investors, Walgreens will take your money no matter <laughs> what you look like, so. Well, Sam, if you <laughs> notice, they they have the Pips Path logo behind them. Yeah. You and I, we have opening for uh, for sponsorship behind yeah, us, so yeah, we're go. we're open. Walgreens, right. give us a call. Sorry, Bradley, cheddar. we didn't mean to interrupt you, but you started talking about Walgreens, and and our minds went yeah, in different ways. Sorry, buddy. Well, I mean, this is you know pretty much the best story our listeners are ever going to hear. So <laughs> probably true. the longer the better. Um, but truly, uh, you know, I, I look back, I, I get that pharmacy degree. I'm living down in Florida, making some decent money. And Cheddar. I want to keep working hard, right? Because mom and dad said, you work hard, good things will happen. So within a few months, they offer me a manager's position. 
uh, at one of the pharmacies down there in Florida. And so uh, increase in my pay, some more responsibilities. But now I'm saying, man, I could move up the, the corporate ladder. There's there's even more perks, bigger salary if I'm a district manager, a district supervisor. So I start looking at, at doing that and realize at that point, well, that's business. That's not pharmacy. That's not knowing drug interactions. That's handling multi-million dollar stores and and the staff that goes with that and all those things. So I go, I got to learn about business. So I'm managing a Walgreens. Now I'm getting an MBA full-time. So my master's in business from the University of Florida. And again, putting in those hundred hour plus weeks because hard work pays off just like mom and dad said. And Walgreens eventually after three years, I've got the degree. I've put in a lot of extra time, kind of proven my worth. And they make me an offer. They say the next time that one of these district positions opens up, wherever in the country it is, it's yours. So great, just like mom and dad said. But about a month later, as I'm waiting for this this life-changing phone call, I get a corporate-wide email that says, you know, exciting news. Walgreens has just purchased uh, Alliance Boots out of Europe, and we're going to be restructuring our entire company which for me meant that the district manager I was kind of working with and learning from was now in a different part of Florida. The market vice president who had offered me that, that next open position uh, was given early retirement. And all of a sudden I was the low man on the totem pole again. And it was kind of right then and there that I realized that even though I was making that money, I was still just a number to them. I didn't actually have any control over my destiny. I didn't have any control over that one stream of income. And a a lot of people would argue, well, that's a really great stream of income. And uh, I won't say it isn't, but I will also say it comes at a very high cost. I had to work nights, weekends, holidays. I mean, that's retail for you. Uh, And and so I just realized uh, in my late 20s that I didn't want to have to spend my life doing that and and essentially relying on somebody else to uh, make me successful. So uh, real estate was was not even in my head, not even in my radar. I'm just finished with my MBA. I'm upset with Walgreens, and I meet my girlfriend, who is now my wife. I call her my better three quarters, Renee. And Renee says, "Bradley, you got to read this book. Got to read this book, Rich Dad Poor Dad." And I said, "Renee, I have been in college for roughly twelve extra years. I am never reading another book for as long as I live." She says, "No, seriously, you got to read this book." I said but I really don't want to. So the next morning I get in my car to drive to the pharmacy, turn it on, Bluetooth connects. And of course the audible version of rich dad, poor dad starts playing over the, the radio there. And that's how uh, my wife got me to listen to the book. But that book is what opened my mind to real estate, to the fact that I could put some hard work into a system where I could create streams of income that whether I was, physically there or not, I'd be able to pull money from that. And if I could amass enough of those properties, uh, I'd be able to replace that six figures of, of earned income from Walgreens with six figures of passive income from real estate. So uh, took me to a, a room, a three-day seminar where I was fortunate enough to meet some, some great mentors in my life and uh, show me how I can can do this real estate thing, even though I didn't have any experience, I didn't have any knowledge, I just, I had the desire. Uh, and when I realized there were people out there that would hold my hand, I uh, was able to leave the pharmacy about a year later uh, to just invest full time. And now that's uh, what both my wife and I do. So no more corporate jobs and, and just working as real estate investors full time. That's awesome. And so you obviously have a totally different story than other people in this group. And so what I want to do is I'm going to throw it over to Sam. Sam, how did you get started in doing all of this stuff? I just want to say that that sounded like an audio book. Well, you just share it. <laughs> oh, it was a very, yeah. very <laughs> lovely story. I told you the best story these listeners are ever going to have. So that was great. The autobiography of Bradley Strack. So how did I get involved in investing? <clears throat> it was really driven by... Uh, uh, my son being born really was was the reason. I just wanted more time. Um, I didn't hate the corporate world. Uh, thought it was pretty cool working with people and building something great. Bothered me that they were buying me at wholesale, selling me at retail, and and uh, and unfortunately, uh, I don't think we can escape it. 
you are what you do. And I think it's difficult to walk into somewhere and, and find out that uh, they don't think you're important, but what you do is important, which makes you replaceable. So that was an exciting. Uh, so when the opportunity, when my son was born, I was taking an opportunity to maybe shift into a different direction to spend more time with him. I grew up without a, a father, unfortunately, uh, and it had an effect on me, a profound effect. And I, I wanted to, I wanted something different for Isaiah. So that that's what really drove me to it. I wasn't really interested in in, in uh, real estate or the stock market per se. I started with the stock market, then shifted to real estate years later. Uh, but uh, it was really driven by the the opportunity to spend more time with my son. Well, that's a lot shorter version than what we just <laughs> heard from is, Mr. Strack. Don't they call that abridged? Is that a bridge? I don't bridge. know. A bridge is something where you get from one person to one place to another. <laughs> well, I know, I know, you know, Sam. <laughs> Sam left me wanting more. I've got a lot of questions. Like that was great. And that's how you do it. I'm just trying to figure out what a bridge, how a bridge has <laughs> a anything bridge, to do. A bridge. That's uh, what yeah. you say. And to yeah. be fair, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'd still prefer you refer to me as Doctor Strack. Okay. <laughs> Great. I've got Dr. Strack and a bridge over here on this side of me. Abridged. Abridged. Uh, I guess, okay, I'm sure you, you're talking English, but he's Canadian. If you didn't if you didn't hear him say yeah, that, I don't think he I said that. I love it when Americans make fun of people who speak the British English, the people who invented it. Well, they, I don't think they don't that's wrong. They don't speak the right English, though. That's the problem. They invented the language. That doesn't, we'll that's that not the right way. <laughs> Americans, as Americans, we know how to speak he didn't English. Know how to speak Sam, Sam speaks, speaks so properly, yes. we don't understand at that high level. It's my diction. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's true. So we've got a bridge and diction. I'm not even sure what we're talking about anymore. So Sam is one of the Canadians in the group here. I'm going to go to my other v. business partner and Canadian v. himself. V. Canadian. And he has more of the Canadian Aboot accent. And he'll talk about mm. a lot of different things in a different way. So... Steve Hipple, how did you get started in property? Well, let's see. Um, <laughs> I won't be as long as Bradley. I don't think I'll be a little longer than Sam is my goal, I think. But uh, <laughs> I, I never invested in property until I was age 40. So 13 years ago, 13 years ago, I was in Kitchener, Ontario, which is just outside Toronto, or Toronto, as we say back home. Toronto. When this far away, say Toronto. Otherwise, you get crazy. <laughs> And that's it. We're crazy. Diction. And uh, so I sat there. I, I was there learning about investing in property. And I saw some advertising. Or actually, I heard a radio ad back then talking about investing in all markets, making money in property. And I never really, I never invested in property. My parents never invested in property. I never had a crazy uncle that did student rentals. I had nothing. So I was open to learning. Up to that point, I'd been working in a family business for the past, the previous 15 years. And I was working, you know, paying off a mortgage and just I was managing 35 people and I had two locations I was running and one was open six days a week, one was open seven days a week. So I was just busy, busy, busy. And after 15 years of kind of doing the same job, paying taxes as an employee and I was trying to buy these businesses, but that wasn't really going well. So I was just kind of working and getting frustrated at work. So I saw the opportunity to do some property. And I didn't know anything about property, so I said, let me go see. And that's where I met Pip. Pip was actually doing a three-day training just outside Toronto in Kitchener. So I sat there all day Friday. Hey, this sounds pretty good. Went back on Saturday. It sounds, hey, it sounds pretty good. So I went back on Sunday. And you know, then I started taking classes and learning how to do property at a higher level. I was going to work. So I was going to work five, six, seven days a week and learning property in my spare time. And so at that, I guess what I did, I just took a bunch of classes and I mean a bunch of classes, whatever I could learn about property, whatever class was happening. Um, it was a networking event within a 90 minute drive each way after work or on a weekend, I would go. So I just kind of basically threw myself at learning about property. Now that was great. I got a lot of knowledge in a short amount of time, but I wasn't doing what I was told. They said, Hey, you know, make offers on property, go talk to a realtor. I said, just give me more education. Give me, I'll learn. I'll do that at the end, which after 10 months, I bought my first investment property. And I could have gone faster in hindsight if people told me, now, Steve, here, go talk to a realtor and go make an offer. If I did that, I I would probably get a property faster. But I got all this knowledge. I collected all this knowledge. And I went at the end and made offers on properties, which is my way, my comfort zone. I look back, I wish I'd done it differently, but it all worked out just fine. So it took me 10 months months to get my first investment property. And it was a property, it, uh, the bank owned it, the bank took it back, and uh, I got probably a 10% discount from uh, retail price, did a small renovation on it. And when I say small renovation, like no cable show would ever film the renovations I did, like flooring, paint, clean it up, put it for sale, 
and actually did a rent to own on that deal. Put a nice young family in there, and they rented it for the next three, four years, and as cash flow positive, four hundred bucks a month. And eventually, and, and I think it's about three and a half years or so, they actually bought the property from me. So it was a good deal for me. They became homeowners in a non traditional way. I was able to help people become homeowners that the bank said no to. That was a pretty cool feeling. And I, I kind of knew lease options, you could do this, but I'd never done one up to this point. So, first deal, lease option, great. Second deal, did a flip. I remember I'd done no real estate trade, no real estate deals before this. I'd bought two two properties, lived in them both, but never did any kind of investing in property. Did you live in them both at the same time? Because that's no. pretty cool. Oh, bought you bought one, one sold, sold it, it <laughs> bought sure. another one. Just trying to do the math. Then, so. I was thinking as a Canadian, maybe you talk different than me. I don't you get know. it. You get it. But yeah. that's that's a really bad question. But thank you for that. I know it's a bad question. I have a lot of bad questions <laughs> and some bad answers. <laughs> So where was I? What was I talking about? Again? You were talking oh, about that estate. second property and the fact that you'd never done anything. And yeah. I thought I heard you say something about you had the coolest, best mentor ever. I met a lot of great people. And when Bradley <laughs> said he met some really cool people, was it a guy, a guy like Tom? A guy like Bill? Who was it? Um, Phil? Yeah. Uh, who was the guy? Yeah, anyway. Had a weird name. Matter. Yeah, he had a weird name. So uh, my second deal was a flip, and it came up really fast after the first deal. So like, now, you're, like, now, you're, now you're a gymnast. You well, had a flip. Yeah. Did a, did a, bought a property at it's a significant a discount. You're going to get a lot of those. Bought so. a property at a significant <clears throat> discount. And this was this was two weeks after I did my first property. The second property came along. And I bought it for less than 50 cents on the dollar. So I got a significant discount. Did a small renovation on it. And I sold it. People told me I was crazy to buy this property. But I just I really didn't know all the details of what I was doing, but I knew enough of the details to keep moving forwards. I had a good deal, had a good deal, but my realtor told me this is not a good deal. My, the, the lady at City Hall is checking title, told me that's risky. All these people were telling me, don't buy this property. My friends and family were like, you're buying this property. They just thought it was a bad idea, but they knew nothing about property, so I bought the property. And I sold it. I, I owned that property for 73 days. And so the first deal, I made some money. The second deal I made, you know, it was about $23,000 on the sale of the second property. And so, you know, I did, I kept doing property, kept doing more properties. I kept doing more, uh, more, more lease options. I kept doing more flips and I started doing joint venture lease options. And then I started doing more creative deals. Did a, did a seller finance, or as we call it back home, a vendor take back. Back home is what we called it back there. So a seller finance deal. Then Vendor, vendor take back, is that what you call a VTB? That's a VTB. Yeah, we, we think that's a sexually transmitted disease here in the U.S. <laughs> so be careful with VTBs. We got, we got pills for that. Yeah, but you do at the pharmacy. At Walgreens. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Walgreens. Room for your logo here. I say there's room right there. What happened, so I started doing, I still go to my day job, still work at my day job, and I was applying all the knowledge I had, I had learned. And I was doing joint venture deals, I was doing lease options, uh, flips, creative financing deals, I was buying properties at discounts and pre-foreclosures, and eventually I was making more money doing property in five to 10 hours a week than I was making at my day job. I've been in, at that point, 15, 16, maybe 17 years. So I was making more money in property and five or 10 hours a week than I was making my, my day job where, where I was working 50, 60, 70 hours a week. So in April of 2014, I left my day job because as a family business, I gave a year's notice. I give you one year's notice. I won't be here in a year. And six months later, the, the business ended up getting sold. I was an employee there. And so I, that is free to do real estate all the time. People say, oh, you can, be a, you can become a realtor. I'm not a realtor. I work with great realtors, but I'm not a realtor. So I continue doing real estate five to 10 hours a week because that was working. And that just gave me more time to do real estate. So over time, I've transitioned my portfolio, started doing business in the US versus Canada now. So and here we are in the US with Pip's Bath, and we got a lot of great students here. So That's awesome. And, and, and Steve and Sam and Bradley have said a lot of different things about their background and what they did. And they used maybe some terminology that you might not be familiar with, especially if you're a brand new real estate investor. We're going to be breaking down all those terms and all those things like vendor take back and, and what is a pre-foreclosure and a lease option, because I'm sure most of you don't know what a lease option is, even if it came up and bit you in the assets. I get that. It's not easy. And so I'm going to give you a quick background of what I've done and how I got here. Uh, you may want to pause this, go get some lunch, because when you come back, it's going to take some time. No, I'm going to keep it short and sweet and to the point. Because what we want you to do is keep tuning into these because what we're going to show you is how to do property and whether you've ever done a property before, you're a brand new investor, whether you don't have money, whether you don't have time, whether you don't have a team, all of those things and those excuses that you use, 
We're going to be talking about a book on our next episode called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. That's on the next episode, isn't it? There's Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And, and, and so that book changed my life. And we'll talk more about that on our next episode. But the key for me was just a plain desire to not do what I was doing before. I was working in a family-owned grocery business. I hated it with a passion. Didn't hate my family. Well, occasionally, sometimes I did. No, I was working in a family-owned business, and I hated working those types of hours. I hated being in retail. I had gone and got plenty of traditional education. Heck, I have an MBA just like Bradley. I can spell it just like Bradley, MBA. I got it. See, I thought MBA stood for massive bank account. Boy, was I wrong. And so if I can do this business, and I'm sure these guys will smack me for this, if I can do this business, anybody can do this yes. business. And so we talk a lot about having a desire. I had a huge desire to make a change because I really wanted to just talk to people. I'm a big fan of talking to people. These guys will tell you it takes me 30 minutes just to say goodbye if we're in a conversation, maybe <laughs> 40 minutes. I'm not sure because I don't want to quit talking. I love talking to people. And, 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 my, and my background is I went to school, I got an education, got an MBA, and then I went out and did stand-up comedy for a number of years. Boy, dad was really proud when I was out there with an MBA telling jokes. You can't, you can't get any more proud as a dad than your boy doing that. Actually, I think he was kind of proud because my dad, his nickname growing up was Ham. And if you know what that means, that means he wanted to be the center of attention. And that's why I'm sitting in the middle. I'm not on one of the ends. I want to be in the center. And so I know you don't all see that, but if, you, if you're watching the video of this, you'll know that I'm in the center of this. The only other reason Bradley's in this picture frame is because we got him taking care of all the technology. Otherwise, it would be me and these guys, well, maybe even off camera. I'm not really sure. The key is we're going to have a lot of fun as we do this, but we're going to tell you that it's about working hard and doing the work that you need to do. I got educated. You heard Steve talk about getting educated. Bradley talked about getting educated. Sam can't even spell education. That's right. Yeah, he's 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 a bridge. I don't know what a bridge is, but that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Get you from here to there. It gets you from where you're at to where birds. you want to be. Exactly. Education's for the birds. It's e overrated. Th th either way, <laughs> I got educated and I had a mentor in my life. And we're going to talk about those things because we, we do that stuff at Pip's Path. And within 16 months, I had bought 16 properties. Because I was smart? No. It's because I wanted to make money. And I wanted to do it when? I wanted to do it now. I do not in any way in any way, want to do things slowly. I am very impatient, and I want to make things happen yesterday. And so that is a little bit about my background. I've had the opportunity, and I'll, and I'll ask these guys. These guys are all business partners of mine. We've come together to create a company called Pip's Path in the last few years, and we now have... Hey, that's your name. That is. That is my name. We've, had, we've got thousands of students that we've seen. <laughs> And the nice part about it is we've taught this in, in, in lots of different places. Steve, how many countries, not just states, how many countries have you taught this in now? I've taught this in eight different countries. Sam, how many countries have you taught it in? Twelve. Twelve different countries. Well, I've taught this in 18 different countries. I win. Oh, did, I, so did, I say, did I say eight? I meant, I meant uh, 19. <laughs> 19. No, I've taught it in 18. I've only done it I just because I've done it longer than these guys. That's the only difference. Uh, because you're older. Yes, I'm older. They're all way smarter than me, and there's nothing wrong with that. I love the fact that you're going to hear me talk about a guy by the name of Robert Kiyosaki. He says this. He says, if you're the smartest person on your team, you need to get a new team. And so this is why I surrounded myself with people that are smarter than me and Steve. And what I've done... <laughs> I think I need a new team. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Bradley, man, last year. I don't know what I'm doing here. And so you, you surround yourself with people who are smarter than you, and what's going to happen is they're going to pull you up. And it's not about me pushing other people down to make myself better. It's about all the boats rising together. And that's what we're going to be showing you with Cash Flow Joe is that we can teach anybody that has a desire how to become a property investor. We've taught this in multiple countries around the world. Bradley, you've taught it in, I'm sure, multiple states, probably dozens of states. And so we've seen students from all over the place. And it doesn't matter what their background is, where they come from, where you come from, your financial situation, your, your, your education background. It doesn't matter. If you have a big enough reason why you want to be successful and you want to put in the effort, we can show you how to do that. And we're going to do that through property investing, and we're going to show you how to build systems and teams to make that happen. So as this show continues, we're going to break all this stuff down into small enough pieces so you can start to follow along and find your path in real estate investing. 
So what I want you guys to think about is getting on that next episode. That next episode, we're going to discuss the foundation of all of our real estate investing because we've all read a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. It's the one book that I think really opened your uh, opened our eyes to the idea of real estate investing, and that's what we want to do. So, Sam, do you have any parting shots that you want yeah. to make before we get out of here on this first initial episode of Cash Flow Joe? Joe, Um yeah, where can where can they get their questions answered? Oh, uh, we're gonna get to all that in just a moment, man. If you if you were here at the See, very I beginning, I wasn't here at the beginning. Yeah, so. it's all good. We'll but get I you am caught up here now, which is the most important thing. We're gonna get you caught up. We'll get that all taken <laughs> care of. You have any parting shots on uh, how you get started and what you did to get started? Just like Nike says, just do it. Just do it. I love it, Bradley. Ask for help. Ask for help. Steve, I don't mean to put you last, but I know if I don't prepare you, you're going to look at me like, oh, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, it's okay. So what, what's, what are your parting shots here? So many people love to talk about real estate and action is always the missing piece. Before action, you need education. Educate yourself. We're going to talk about multiple exit strategies. And the more exits you have, the more protected you are as an investor. So multiple exits are always good. Education and then action because there's a great visual and... Pip has a great visual of two legs. You want to stand up and do that? No. Well, I don't think we need to. I don't know. Most people aren't even well, aren't even watching we're this. On They're YouTube. listening. Yeah. So Pip has a great a great visual. It's just a funny visual. We make fun of him doing this all the time, but he stands up and he says, "You got an action leg," and he just moves one leg. He goes in a circle, and he says, "That's action where the education is no good." The other leg is education leg, and he moves it and he goes in another circle the other way. He says, "Action and education together, you step forward." And it's actually a great visual. So just picture one leg action, one leg education one leg action one leg education so action without education is no good and education without actions you need them both well we're going to have them follow us on social media so they'll be able to see i'll do that video so everybody can see it because i think that is so important is you've got to do both things because if you know what nike's marketing concept is and and, and sam already said it is just do it what if their marketing concept was just think about it how many how many shoes do you think they'd sell if it was just think about it not very many. What we want to do is we want to get out there, start taking some action. So the actions that we're going to ask you to take so that you can be a part of what we do here at Cashflow Joe, and more importantly, even Pip's Path, is we want you to subscribe to our podcast. Can't even say the word subscribe. <laughs> subscribe to the podcast on whatever platform you choose to use. And I want you to also, if you have more, uh, for more information on real estate investing, we've got a ton of stuff. Go to pipspath.com. What we want you to do is also follow us on social media. Go to Pips Path to Property and Cash Flow Joe Podcast on Facebook, Instagram, and in any other way that you want to find us. YouTube, I think we're also on. Are we on TikTok? Oh, we're on the talk. We're on the talk. There we we're go. So talk. leave us a comment, give us a follow, and we look forward to seeing you on the path.